Joining us now for our Week in Review panel is crypto markets analyst Glenn Williams Jr. and technology reporter Frederick Manawa, both of Coindesk. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome, George. Well, good to see you. Yeah. Thanks, George. No, this, is, this is my show, Glenn. That's right. My show. <laughs> no problem. Welcome to my show. Absolutely. So, Glenn, let's talk yes. about the elephant that's at least in my room. ETH is outpacing BTC this week. Should we be watching her back? Is ETH coming for the crown? Uh, it's, I mean, certainly making a case. I mean, this is the third consecutive week that ETH has made gains uh, versus Bitcoin. And Bitcoin had a solid week. Bitcoin up 8% or so, uh, but Ether is up 11% or so, built uh, based largely on the fact that they had a successful um, completion of the Shanghai upgrade, uh, allowing uh, depositors of ETH to withdraw their deposits uh, from the network. Um, there was some talk about whether or not that would be something that depressed prices, but it's been just the opposite. It's actually acted as more of a de-risking um, event. And you can actually see that while initially there was um, an increase in the flow of net deposits off of the Ethereum network, that has narrowed a bit uh, over the last couple of days or so. So I think that ETH is adding more functionality. There are more improvements coming down the pike. And while I think that Bitcoin is, is still a solid a asset, um, Ether is also uh, making a claim uh, as well. Right. So they're pulling ETH off of validators, right? And they're not selling. Is that why the price hasn't tanked? Because the, like you mentioned, the idea that everyone had in their head was once uh, people were able to start selling their ETH, they'd start doing that, and you know the price would tank. Are people just not selling? That would be my take. I mean, there, there are some who are selling. There are some institutions, I believe, that have to sell because Kraken had to get rid of their, uh, their staking um, service. So you do have that. But by the same token, even if you look at the amount of uh, ETH stakers over time, I guess since 2021 or so, that's been steadily increasing. So from my vantage point, if there were going to be a rush to the exits um, once the upgrade was completed, you would have seen that decrease over time. So I do believe that while there are institutions who are selling and, and also individuals who are just selling because they want to reap uh, the rewards that they have, that, it, that they've uh, earned, uh, there's still some buying. And I think that a lot of people are seeing this as an opportunity to stake and still uh, maintain full custody um, and not have to worry about the, uh, the lockup time. Right. Okay. Glenn, and I'll bring you in a second, Frederick, but Glenn, I want to ask you about markets a little bit more. What do you make of the just macro landscape in general? You know, CPI is coming down, but rates are going up. Uh, what does that mean for Bitcoin? I think that the macro landscape, at least this week, has been has been good for Bitcoin. There were two primary data points that I was that I was looking at. One, which was CPI, so inflation. Uh, was better than expected, and uh, the unemployment rate or initial jobless claims uh, were higher than expected. And it, it's always it's always difficult to to say that higher unemployment is, is is a net positive, but it is what the Federal Open Market Committee has been signaling that they kind of want to see to to um, even give an indication that they're going to slow down or or pause rate hikes. So as it relates to what the FOMC has been indicating, uh, the decrease uh, of the decrease rather of a uh, CPI. Uh, and the slight uptick in uh, jobless claims indicates that things are going in the right direction. Uh, Bitcoin being a risk asset is has, has benefited from that, in my view. So to that, I want to ask a question I've been asking a lot of people about risk. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin's risk profile. Risk on, risk off. Doesn't feel right to me. I go with risk whatever, but what would you call it? Would you still call it a risk on asset? Uh, yes, <laughs> to a certain extent, it's, it's, it certainly is a risk asset. I, I think that a lot of people are drawn to Bitcoin because of the, the potential um, for alpha. But it's a unique asset because there, there's a risk off component as it relates to uh, fiat uh, currency. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a unique asset in that you can gain um, alpha, but also run for uh, security as well versus, versus your base currency.